Have you seen those things? Um, uh, this is a gaming keypad. I'm pretty sure you have seen at least once somewhere on someone's gaming setup or someone's like personal uh, gaming rig or streaming rig or things like that. But what even is this? And do you really need to think about buying this or getting this in some way or whether it will make you a better gamer or better content creator? So let's discuss gaming keypads and whether they are actually a good thing for you, bad thing for you, whether they're worth it to buy or if they are what is worth to buy or uh, or if they are not why they're not so without further ado let's just get it started and you know what because i'm not here to waste your time i'm gonna give you the answer right away these things right here well these are not worth it not because they don't work but because they're not well supported this is probably the most comfortable gaming peripheral that you can have to play very comfortably and very ergonomically but usually these things lack in software and lack in it severely but there's still keyboards in this form factor that will actually satisfy the needs of the most so let's just discuss that oh, okay let's first just discuss what does constitute as a gaming keypad or what even is it so this right here is razer tartarus v2 and for me this was one of my favorite gaming peripherals for like around two years this thing costs around 75 dollars or 100 dollars for the optical switches and it is extremely comfortable gaming device and in reality technically this is just the half of the keyboard yes literally this is the left half of the keyboard and all you need to do is just put your fingers right this one and this will replicate w a s d that's that's basically what it is gaming keypad is basically the left half of the keyboard the part of the keyboard that gamers are using the most and the right part usually is reserved for the mouse and because you don't have all this large part of the full-size keyboard right here you have an ample space allowing you to well rotate the gaming keypad on or use the mouse very ergonomically comfortably and allowing you to have very long gaming session without having any wrist pains or well any other physical injury and trust me if you game a lot after some time the keyboard slanting or the keyboards like overall form factor might be a bit well injuring for your wrists you would won't be noticeable for the short gamers but for the long ones it will trust me and this keypad is just made to well alleviate that it has an ortholineal layout out, meaning that all the keys are in the grid formation and they're not staggered like on the regular keyboard but what's most important in many case scenarios the keys on such keyboards are fully programmable meaning that you can actually set up all the keys however you want but that's actually one of the biggest issues with this keyboard in particular and majority of the keyboard but first before we're gonna go to actual software let's discuss hardware and hardware wise this thing is amazing and majority of the gaming keypads are actually amazing because they are very small you can actually set up however you want you can put it right in front of you you can uh, you can angle it a bit or however you want and for that reason it's very comfortable and because this keypad in particular has very very comfortable wrist rest it's actually very ergon it's actually very ergonomic and very good to play on it has 19 main buttons right here 20th as a space right here and has a very comfortable uh, place for the space bar it has a d-pad with with eight directional buttons, additional button right here, and even a scroll wheel. Overall, it has 25 main buttons, including the D-pad, and there is also four additional uh, diagonal D-pad buttons. That's uh, 29 for you. And scroll wheel is a button one, and there is also up and down scroll. That's three, so meaning that it has 32 programmable buttons. The hardware-wise, uh, my biggest down, my biggest grip with this one is the non-detachable cable and not having the ability to play wirelessly on this keyboard because yeah even though so many people don't like wireless keyboards it has come in a long way and wireless keyboards usually are on par or sometimes even better than wired ones yes it might not be the best for esport gamers who required every millisecond they can get from the keyboard but for 99 percent of people wireless keyboard is actually much better imagine having this as a wireless without this long wire or at least it would have been great to have a detachable usb-c wire or i don't know even micro usb would be fine but the issue with this one and my biggest problem with this one as an amazing gaming and even productivity keyboard starts with the software because this one works on Razer Synapse and have you used the Razer Synapse 
you know what I'm talking about. Resident Synapse is simply plain out bad software. As first, let's start with the things that it can do. Well, you can actually program any button right here to do anything that you want. For example, if you want the regular WSD here, you can do that. If you want the arrow buttons here, you can do that. If you want number row on the top, you can do that. Or if you want like additional keys, for example, if you want number four to be a G key for grenade, for example, in some games, you can actually set it up easily. You can actually set up a full macros, basically have all the sequence of different buttons presses set up on different buttons which makes it pretty amazing for productivity if you're using a multiple button clicks for example i used this during the video editing when i was pressing the button the keypad was actually setting up uh, the keypad was actually sending a few strokes around allowing me to select the clip cut it out cut it cut it down the middle move the pin to the left select what is under the pin and then the ripple delete moving entire video to the left this might not be a use case for everyone but for video editors yet you know that the saving this this many clicks will add up and just will probably half the amount of video editing that you need to do on your videos but you see, even these features are very basic. For example, you don't have ability to do layers. Well, you kind of do, but not really. You have a separate key maps and it's actually set up with this uh, and, and you can actually see what key maps you're using with these three different lights. And the key maps basically means that it's you're changing a basically different profile and all done within the software itself. You also have Razer Hyper, Hyper Shifts, which actually is an actual layer while you press a single button and while you're holding it, you can actually remap everything to every other button as well, basically doubling the number of buttons you can actually click. So we had the 32 keys and one is the hyper shift. So we can have basically that means that you have 31 times two plus one, which is a 63 keys available on this keyboard, which is pretty cool. But that's only two layers. You, that, uh, you cannot do more than two layers. And the worst case scenario, this keyboard, this keyboard will not save any of the profiles that you do. No matter how, no matter what you will set up right here, it will not be saved on a keyboard itself. It's saved on an account on a Razer Synapse. And God forbid your internet connection is down because if it is, it will literally transform just into the left half of the keyboard where you are unable to remap anything or use anything because the Razer Synapse requires you to have an internet connection. And if you're gonna change your PCs, well, you will not be able to use that because you will need to go to the Razer Synapse account, the same account, and then download the profile here, which is awful. And the same is not just with this one, and the same is with the majority so-called gaming keypad. And it's actually a big issue. But to be fair, I was looking around for a while to find the best solution to literally change this thing for me. Because this thing still is one of the best gaming keypads. There is no better than this one. So I was looking around to find the best gaming keypad. And in reality, I was not able to find one. Yes. There is no good gaming keypad, or rather there is no great gaming keypad to satisfy everyone's needs. But there is one thing that I found that is much more complicated, yet it satisfied all of my needs. And it's this guy right here. Who will actually not be able to find it by this exact same thing. But this is actually a split DIY keyboard, or rather my interpretation of more my build of it. This thing is actually called Core. No, no brand, nothing like that. This is an open source keyboard that you will need to build by yourself. Everything right here, everything here is fully custom made. And by the way, you, you do not see wire coming out of this one because it doesn't have one. This is fully wireless, orthonear, fully ergonomic keyboard, split keyboard. You can see, you can say it's two keyboards, just like this one. Well, it's, it actually does not come in a wooden case. I actually built this case myself. The real, in reality, the keyboard looks something like this. This is the keyboard. It has something attached in a back, it's, it's made by me. And you actually need to build this keyboard all by yourself. And uh, this is using nice nanos as the microcontrollers. This is the Bluetooth microcontroller. And this cable that you see is actually connected to the batteries right here that I made detachable. And I actually have at attached this wooden piece uh, on the back magnetically. But why is this keyboard any good? And what does this can do that this cannot? Well, first things first, this is not a gaming keypad. This is a full size. This is a full keyboard. 
This is a 40% keyboard and it's much smaller than the regular keyboard. It's basically has only 42 buttons against 100 plus on a full size keyboard, but it's more than manageable. I actually upgraded to this one from this keyboard right here, that this is Ortholinear Prionic. And what this one can do, by the, and by the way, this wooden walnut case uh, and wrist rest is actually made by me. So you cannot, you will not be able to find it yourself. It's actually fully DIY. I even have it attached with the magnets right here and the coins. So this is just to tent, tent it up or uh, slide slightly to the left, just like on the Razer Tartars. And why this keyboard is actually better? Well, first, it is wireless. This is fully Bluetooth keyboard and even and it, and it even connects to the other side with a Bluetooth. So you basically have no wires. Second, it's battery powered. That this, this right here, this is the battery that it's actually uses. Look how small this thing is. I have wrapped it in electrical tape just because it's already open. It's already it'll be used, but look how small it is. Or if you want something bigger, look, you can go it a bit larger just like that. It's still thin, very thin. It can be used. It can be put right here easily. Or you can put it on behind and you will not be able to feel this because it's only three millimeters. But this small battery can actually operate this keyboard right here for entire week. This one battery for entire week and it fully charges in under an hour. Why Razer didn't do this? Well, maybe because of the backlighting. But even if gonna, if you're gonna use a bit larger battery and use it, we use full RGB backlighting, this can still operate this keyboard for a few hours. Or you can alternatively put a larger battery and have it active for the few days. But trust me, un unless you are very deep into it, you really don't need an RGB. I don't use RGB on this one and I cannot be happy. I, I have more than enough RGB around me anyway. Well, what else? Okay, why it's wireless, it's comfortable. It's not as comfortable as the Razer one is. But what it also has, full customizability. I have an ability to have as many different buttons as I want, as many different layers as I want. I even have an ability to have a combo buttons. For example, if I press Q and W at the same time, I have an F1, for example, or if I press Q and E, I have an F2. I have an entire F row aligned to the combos on the, this five buttons only 12 12 different keys on this five buttons excluding the buttons themselves and i have an ability to change different profiles based on the games that i play or the works that i do i also have the ability to do full macros and do you know what's amazing you don't need a separate software to keep it running no matter where i will connect this wired or wireless and by the way i can connect this to five devices simultaneously at the same time with a bluetooth i will not need to change anything on any of the different devices all the keys all the layers will be working on everything I have connected this to my gaming PC, to my Mac, to my iPad, and to my iPhone at the same time. And, and I can just change the device by just pressing two buttons on the keyboard. It's pretty good, it's ergonomic, and it's, well, it's just a regular keyboard. I will not need, I, I don't need to put additional keyboard on my table. And well, if you don't like this one, and maybe you want the number row on, on top, well, you can actually have the option as well. There's also another keyboard called Lily58, allowing you to have a number row on the top, and a bit more buttons for your thumb. Or if you don't care about number row and want more buttons on your thumb, there is also a Kyria. You can go and have like much more buttons on your thumb cluster as well. Plus, this is fully customizable if you want to add scroll wheels, rotary encoders, or it even has an ability to add a trackball mouse on the different keys as well. You can actually do that, which is insanely cool thing. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. You see, this entire keyboard was actually well assembled by me. Literally everything. All and all I did was just buy parts. I bought the PCB where everything was connected. I bought the diodes, hot swap key switches, the key switches themselves, the keycaps, uh, the, uh, the microcontrollers, the batteries, and I actually made this case by myself. And I, I sorted everything and I connected everything and I compiled the software, I flashed it, and I actually created different key maps and I used it all and I did it all by myself. And this is not an easy task for just a regular user. It's actually pretty complicated, but not as much as you think. 
especially the assembling part. You probably think the assembling will be the, the most difficult part. It's actually what's the easiest part. You actually need to solder everything, but trust me, even just a $10 soldering iron, which I use on this keyboard, will be more than enough. And I liked it so much, they actually used much more, and they actually bought much more expensive soldering iron just to do these things more afterward. And I actually started learning different type of electronics and just microcontrollers and Arduinos and things like that just because of this. So is this the perfect gaming keypad? Well, to be fair, it is for me, but with no, with no downsides? Of course not, it has a downside. First is, of course, it's price. Buying everything separately and getting the same kit, well, of course, outside of the case itself, will cost you around $150. And I'm talking about the wireless kit. But because every single thing here is customizable, you can actually get this for much, much cheaper. Like for example, PCBs and the plates are actually only things that you cannot get cheaper. Well, you can actually get them cheaper, but you actually have to order PCBs by yourself, which is an another can of worms. And the PCB with the diodes and all the key connectors, all the connectors and everything will cost you around $50. So this is the base price. Then the other things that you will need to buy is basically two microcontrollers, in this case, nice nanos, all the switches. In this case, there are, I have the mix of Cherry Mix blues and Cherry Mix reds and all the keycaps. So because of what I've used right here, the price is around $150. But if you go with the cheaper switches or if you go, for example, with Pro Micros, which will cost you around $20 for two instead of $50, for the nice nanos. And if you go with the cheaper keycaps, you can go below $100, getting closer to this one, to the Razer Touchers. And I like this one, which uses membrane switches, which acts like the mechanical ones. This ones do have mechanical. These are actually Cherry Mix Blues right here and the Cherry Mix Reds right here. And you can actually mix and match however you want. But unlike that one, this is also a full keyboard. And if you want to buy new keyboard and new keypad at the same time, this one will still be cheaper. Plus, there is also one thing. If you are lefty, and you can actually customize left side as your main keyboard. Yes, you can, you finally can finally have left side gaming keypad. And these two keyboards together are simply insanely good value. Overall, let's conclude this thing. Is gaming keypad the thing that you need to buy? Well, actually, no. It's very comfortable, very ergonomic, and very cool thing to use, but but absolute majority of the gaming keypads that I have used and I have checked, they don't have good enough software to justify their price and their usage. Instead, I would highly suggest you to go with the split keyboard instead. And if you don't even count the gaming, typing all those keyboards is actually much more comfortable and much more good for your wrist, to be fair, because yeah, after years, you will feel the effect on your wrist. Last ortholinear layout is actually much more easier to learn than you think. I actually learned it on this keyboard right here. This is all KB, uh, this is all KB Prionic, and it's actually a very beautiful full metal, very heavy, very robust keyboard. And I actually learned uh, ortholinear on this one. This actually costs up to $200 to get this fully kitted out. So I would actually prefer to go with a split keyboard when I could. But so yeah, actually, actually wasted my actually wasted my money a little bit there. But instead, you can go to other split keyboards. I think uh, that other split keyboards that I have actually well that are actually keyboards. Uh, but unlike just having this only one left side of the keyboard, the other split keyboards are full size keyboards as well, and you can actually save some time and some money, um, some money and some space on your table by already having a split keyboard. Keyboard, and if you want, you can have uh, a, you can only use the right side if you're lefty and use your mouse with the left hand and with your right hand, you can use the keyboard, which is insanely good value for the lefties out there. Well, my suggestion is this, don't go buy, don't look, don't even look for gaming keypads, go for split keyboards. This will be much better value for you and will save you a lot of money in a long run. Well, I hope you like this type of videos. I want to record more this like conversation type of videos with you just to discuss different topics for gaming wise or tech wise or otherwise. There, there was a lot of wises there. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you for being here with me. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe for more videos like this one and I'm going to see you in the next one. See ya.